To hear the entire show and many others, visit www.puremomentum.net. I am aware that insanity is ruling right now in the oligarchy. And, uh, you know, we hear and we see about ISIS. And it's mind-boggling what we're hearing and what we're seeing and, and what's going across the news in the, the uh, you know, the regular media and in the alternative media. What is your perspective on who, who and what the uh, ISIS is and what is really happening? Because we can't trust anything, any of the information we get because it's all stacked up to get to a certain uh, end goal for them. And so we never really see the whole picture of what's going on. But I would like to hear your perspective on uh, ISIS, if you would, Max. Well, ISIS kind of appeared out of nowhere. It was incredibly well-funded, incredibly well-armed, incredibly well-organized. Um, the head of ISIS, the self-proclaimed head of ISIS, looks very much like uh, a man whose name escapes me at the moment, who's a known Mossad agent. It just seems like the latest CIA Mossad boogeyman that came along right at the time when Western powers needed a new boogeyman. Yeah. You know, we, we were talking about we wanted to pull troops out of Iraq, but you know, they didn't really want to do it. Oh, no, now we can't because now there's this terrible ISIS group there. Um, they were funding them and, and supplying them with weapons in Syria because they viewed them as a, a legitimate resistance against Bashar Assad whom they tried to set up last year with that fake sarin gas right. false flag, which was seen to be a false flag. It was obvious that this was British gas that was funneled into Syria through Saudi Arabia, and the rebels, which is ISIS, actually made a mishandled it and it went off in the tunnels. So it wasn't actually Bashar Assad at all. It was the ISIS rebels, and it was all funded by the United States and, and Britain. So we're funding weapons to these people in Syria and calling them a legitimate resistance, and then they're shooting the weapons straight across the border into Iraq, where we're now bombing them as a terrorist organization. And it's all, it's all the same crew. It's all about destabilizing the Middle East. These are the same rebels that they used to depose Gaddafi in Libya, then they went over the border into Syria. Now they're going over the border into Iraq. I mean, it's the same people. It's all funded by the West and created by the West. The whole ISIS boogeyman came along at exactly the right time when they needed a, a new boogeyman. So, I mean, it's, it's theatre for the masses. It really is. And it's so Western contrived. It, it really is. I mean, these sort of people have nothing to do with Islam. I mean, it's the same as Christian extremists have nothing to do with Christianity. You know, Muslim extremists have nothing to do with Islam because right. most religions are peaceful religions. So any of these people that, that claim they're religious extremists, no, they're not. They're just extremists. You know? Right, right. Uh, well, you know. It's, it's, theater, it's theater for the masses, and it's come along at exactly the right time. You know, we always need a boogeyman, don't we? Yeah. You know? And, like, they wanted to go in and bomb Syria, but we wouldn't let them last year. And right. all now we have to go and bomb Syria because – now this terrible ISIS group is in Syria. Well, now what is it? Now that we've supplied them with so many arms that they've actually become a threat, we've, we've called them a terrorist group and we're going to go in and bomb the country. Right. I mean, it's outrageous, you know. But we're not actually bombing ISIS. We're bombing the people yet again. Well, yeah, it always is. It's always the way. I oh, know it's an ISIS stronghold, mm -hmm. what, this whole neighborhood, you know. And now you've got, you've got um, um, Netanyahu trying to compare Hamas with ISIS. I know. I mean, it's just unbelievable what they're doing, you know. And the latest genocide that we saw in Gaza, I mean, yeah, you know, all of this is right on cue to distract from all, all of these things. So yeah. it's just another Western manufactured boogeyman, you know. Right. Well, you know, um, Putin in Russia uh, raised enough hell to keep us from going into um, Syria last year. But do you think he's just going to sit by and let us uh, go on in now? Well, the whole ISIS boogeyman, see, they've got a whole new um, way of approaching it, you know. So they don't want uh, – um, Putin doesn't want to appear like he's a supporter of terrorism now because of this latest spectre, you know what I mean? So, right. Yeah. I mean, and look, Putin bailed the United States out 12 months ago. Right, and then, absolutely. And then, it, 
Now they're putting sanctions on him. I mean, right. it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's costing the EU like billions and billions of dollars every day. These these sanctions against Russia. It's uh, it's it's amazing what they're doing. It's like they they want the world econ- economy to collapse. They want yes. America to implode. They want Israel to implode. They want the EU to implode. Yeah, it, right. it's pretty dangerous game they're playing. It is dangerous and. The, uh, I use the, the word insanity a lot because there is no logic and there is no sanity in it. And so when people uh, wake up to a certain level of consciousness, their head is just spinning because everything is so insane. Much like you mentioned when you were young and it was like you couldn't figure out what was going on and you knew that it wasn't right. And when people wake up, they know this is crazy. This can't be right. And, and you just go from, from one distraction to the next to the next looking at the insanity. And I think as, as, uh, as soon as, as we figure out it is run by insane psychopaths because uh, psychopathy is an insanity and it's an incurable insanity. And I've done a really good show on, uh, psychopathy and it talks about the, uh, you know, the insanity and how it can't be cured. And that is who is running our world right now. So if we're looking for sanity, we need to go inside of ourselves and then try to maneuver outside like you speak of. Go to your heart first because that's where you're going to find sanity and logic, in my opinion. Now, uh, you've done phenomenal work uh, in and on Gaza. And, uh, you know, Gaza was front and center for a few days there a couple of weeks ago and now we've been distracted and it's like that doesn't you know uh, Gaza doesn't count it's not important anymore and yet the genocide is still happening the atrocities are still happening and you hear things like um, you know like that um, oh I can't remember that guy's name now that uh, Jewish extremist uh, Moshe uh, Berglund that calls for a concentration camp in Gaza. Well, it's already a big concentration camp. And so uh, what do you have to tell us about, and you know more about what's going on in Gaza and in, than anybody, in my opinion. So if you can talk to us about that and the genocide that's continuing there, that would just be great. Well, I mean, the genocide that's going on in Gaza has been going on for 67 years. The whole genocide against the uh, Palestinian people has been going on for 67 years, ethnic cleansing. Uh, it's, it's kind of dropped out of the news now because the bombing raids have stopped. There was talk that the siege was, was going to be uh, down, the borders were going to be open. Israel is actually talking about building a smart fence around Gaza now. And it, it's just ongoing. That's why I want to go there in about two weeks. I want to go there and make a documentary about what the situation is there now. Mm, There's uh, about 400,000 people made homeless from this latest incursion. There are hundreds upon hundreds of uh, permanently disabled children from this latest incursion. And it's just uh, the situation is deteriorating rapidly. Israel doesn't seem to be uh, doing what they agreed to do when the uh, the ceasefire happened and the truce was uh, made. They had, had agreed to end the blockade and to allow uh, trade into Gaza. They don't appear to be allowing that to happen. They're still shooting fishermen who are fishing well within the six-mile limit. So they're getting four or five miles out to sea and the uh, Israeli gunboats are opening fire on them again. They're shooting people in the West Bank as we speak. Uh, They're they're continuing the settlement program. They're they're pushing as as much as they can to make sure the conflict keeps going. We're just not hearing about it. And, of course, the, the resistance in Gaza, these people are called terrorists, when really they're not terrorists at all. They're simply resistance you know, they're, they're fighting back against uh, blatant Israeli aggression and terrorism that's been going on for 67 years. And anybody who fights back, it's called a terrorist. That, that's the way it is. Right. So um, right. we're just not hearing about it because it isn't a, an ongoing slaughter at the moment. It's just a slow genocide the way it has been for the past few years. I mean, ever since the siege happened in, in 2007 when they, they actually put the place under siege, it's been deteriorating ever since. And with the amount of damage that they've just done in this latest 51 days of bombing, I mean, the situation there at the moment is absolutely dreadful. And it's getting worse every day that aid doesn't go in and every day that the borders aren't opened. 
So we need to have uh, global attention on it. It needs to remain on it. At least, like, we have got a, a reasonable amount of attention on it in as much as people are looking at it still, even though the media isn't focusing attention on it. The people are still looking. This latest incursion created millions upon millions of new Palestinian activists out of people that had never heard of Gaza before. So, in a way, uh, Israel really shot themselves in the foot with this latest incursion. To hear the entire show and many others, visit www.puremomentum.net.